today I'm going to be talking about TypeScript. My name is Joe Skeen. Just a little bit about me. I'm a very passionate developer. Um, I've worked with a variety of technologies over the years. I actually started uh, programming at the ripe old age of about eight with my dad's programming tools and just had a lot of fun with it and have done a lot of stuff since then. Here's some of the places I've worked for. Currently I work for Intermountain Healthcare. I also do a lot of stuff with the community. I presented at uh, Open West Conference and I have done uh, the Angular Utah Meetup and now the Utah JavaScript Conference. I'm also out on GitHub and have contributed a lot to the Definitely Typed repository as well as a couple of others. Um, and I'm just getting started with Hack Hands, um, which is a plural site company which provides on-demand mentoring. So. So what is TypeScript? Um, who here has heard of TypeScript before? I would assume that most of you have probably at least heard of it. Otherwise, you probably would be in one of the other sessions. Um, has anyone here used TypeScript before? A Little bit? Okay, so what is TypeScript? Anyone? A superset of JavaScript, that's good. Anyone else? Okay, introduces some types. Perfect. Anything else? So it's an open source language that was created by Microsoft and has been out in the open source community for a while. A lot of uh, libraries are, they're, they're working with the teams from a lot of the different libraries to try to m meet the needs of the uh, JavaScript community. So although it is, uh, it's an open source language, superset of JavaScript, adds ECMAScript 6 and beyond features and static typing, Today, to frame this conversation that we're going to have, I would like you to think about TypeScript as a productivity tool to help you write better JavaScript, because that's really what it is. TypeScript doesn't actually run in the browser. You have to transpile it to normal JavaScript. But the benefit that you get from TypeScript is while you're writing the code, when the tooling that you get behind it, and especially when you have to make changes to existing code. TypeScript really helps to make sure that those changes are safe. Well, before you come and you know burn me at the stake saying we don't need no stinking types in JavaScript, I have a little bit of news here that might surprise you. There are already types in JavaScript. I know, right? <laughs> so we have built-in types like Boolean, number, number, string, object, undefined. Um, however, the language itself doesn't expose those types, so you can't express yourself saying this variable should be of this type. Or, you know, if you're writing an API, you can't say, I'm expecting a string to be passed in. Um, and that is one reason why a lot of the tools that help us write our JavaScript have a hard time helping us the way that they should. Because it, you can literally do anything with JavaScript. Um, here's a uh, sublime text here, and we declare a variable, and we say x dot, and we get x and var. Um, so that's not super helpful. Um, IntelliJ or WebStorm, you say x dot, and they go the other way, and they give you every single option of every single type that it possibly could be, which also is not super helpful to you. Um, so being able to have types in a language really helps the tool to be able to give you the feedback you need, give you the help that you need to write good code and write the code that you want to fast rather than slow with less bugs. Um, so yeah, TypeScript, it's a gradual typing system. When you move to TypeScript, you don't have to type everything all, all at once. Since it's a superset of JavaScript, all valid JavaScript is also valid TypeScript. And you can start with what you have and introduce typing where it makes sense to you um, so that you can get the most benefit out of it. OK, so this is the video part if you want to come hook this up. This is actually a short excerpt of a talk about TypeScript at the Microsoft Build Conference. Um, who here is familiar with AngularJS? Probably a lot. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of hype about TypeScript because of Angular 2 being built in TypeScript. And this, uh, 
particular video clip here is when Misco and Brad Green from Google um, came to the Microsoft Build Conference and talked about TypeScript. This is this is a fun adventure here. Right. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Um, so, especially when you are working with a JavaScript project that starts out small and before you know it, it grows up and becomes very hard to manage, <laughs> um, TypeScript can really help out with those things. Another good thing about TypeScript, as I mentioned before, all of your existing JavaScript code that you've written is also valid TypeScript. So who's written JavaScript before? You have also written TypeScript. All right. Um, also, jo uh, TypeScript has great tooling support. There's a lot of the popular code editors and IDEs that support it. Um, and they actually have a, a node package as part of TypeScript that's shipped that allows any editor to create um, interfaces with it. It's a TypeScript language service. So really, TypeScript can go anywhere that your JavaScript is. In addition to that, there's a bunch of third-party libraries out there in the JavaScript world. We all love it, right? There's a lot of great open source stuff on GitHub and NPM, Bower. And uh, out on uh, GitHub, there's a repository called Definitely Typed, where um, people from the community have gone in and created TypeScript definition files, which describe the API of different third-party JavaScript libraries. We've got Angular, we've got Ember, jQuery, Sencha, Jasmine, hundreds more. In fact, so let's jump here. And so they have so many different libraries, they had to truncate the number of things that they display here, which is not very frequently you see that on GitHub. Um, if you go to definitelytype.org slash TSD, so you can see that okay. Um, someone shout out a, a JavaScript library that you use. Angular. Angular. So we've got, whoop, that didn't, Angular. Oh, somehow my internet isn't working right now. But uh, there's tons of different Angular stuff. Actually, we can come back here and see it if we go to here. The, we've not only got AngularJS, but we've got a ton of different Angular plugins that people have written that have type definitions. Um, and you can go through here. I mean, there's literally like 1,200 different libraries that people have added in there. I've actually added some myself. Um, I've contributed a lot of definition files for Gulp plugins that I've used um, you since I've. Up and let us see what it looks like? Sure, yeah. Um, actually, we'll get to that in just okay. a minute. I'll show you some of those. Um, but anyway, so definitely typed is huge and, and makes all of the magic of, of TypeScript work when using third-party stuff. Enough talk. Let's see code. 
So there we go. Um, so I've put together a few examples here. Oh, yeah. There we go. So this, this editor that I'm using here um, is called Visual Studio Code. Um, I don't know how many people have heard of that. It's a free editor that Microsoft put out earlier this year that works on Linux, OS X, and Windows. And it's, it's not quite like a code editor, and it's not quite like an IDE. It's kind of like somewhere in the middle there, where you can get a lot of good tooling support without all the baggage that comes with a full-blown IDE. So, um, and it's actually written in TypeScript. So that's really cool, too. Um, so if, if I have a file here, and let's, let's just go to like jQuery. So if I want to use jQuery, um, normally, if you're just in any editor here and you don't have any typings to work with, um, you put something in here and you just don't really get anything except for, well, IntelliJ gives you everything. And you know, you get nothing there. But what uh, happens here in Visual Studio Code and in other editors when you enable the TypeScript in them is you can get these typing files, like this jQuery.d.ts here, which describes the API of jQuery and has a lot of documentation in there. Um, if you can go all the way down. That's uh, over 3,000 lines of code that describe the outside API of, of jQuery. So you can get really great auto completion like this. So here I've got, uh, I'm trying to iterate over some divs and I go div dot. Now wait a minute, that doesn't look quite right. That looks like stuff that you would do to a number. I can hover over the each and go, oh, the first uh, argument is supposed to be a number that's the index and then the second one's, okay. So I can put an index in there and now I get everything that you can do to a div without having to worry about any extra stuff. This is all valid API stuff off of div, which is really cool. Um, so there's a couple of other definition files. So there's the jQuery one. This is the one that's built into TypeScript that actually describes the entire JavaScript library, including DOM manipulation and everything. And that is about 17,000 lines long. This is what you as a JavaScript developer are expected to have memorized. And I don't know about you, but I'm not even close to that. So it's nice to have tools that can bring the documentation to you, bring the autocompletion, let you know, hey, it's, a, it's expecting this type of element or this kind of number or things like that. Yeah? You create your own, you probably create your own definition, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see a little bit about, uh, of that in just a second here. Um, so we've got our jQuery, and we've got, we can do stuff, whoa, that's the wrong one. Div, you can do stuff with that. If you go to index, you can do stuff with that. Um, if you're just off of the jQuery object, you get all of the jQuery methods. So this really, uh, when I was first starting out with TypeScript, I was also starting out with AngularJS. And having those definition files there to kind of give me an idea of what I'm doing was super helpful. Um, and then also as I've moved into kind of a bigger project where we've got all kinds of stuff going on, having kind of contracts between our different modules and files and services has made things really, really nice. Um, so let's look at an Angular example here. So normally here we've got, you know, uh, a controller here, just a standard controller. And we can take scope here and do, well, it's not gonna really help us any because we don't have any type associated with it. However, let's go ahead and let's start using, so with, with the jQuery example, we were still using just JavaScript here. And it was still using the TypeScript definition file to help us out using JavaScript. But when we're defining our own functions here and we've got these parameters, we need to be able to tell the tool what types we're expecting those parameters to be. So if I go here and I rename my file from .js to .ts and save that, I can now add type uh, annotations here. And this is kind of similar to how you'll see type annotations in some languages. Not a lot of the C languages do the types first, but 
Here you can just say um, angular.iscope. And now when we say scape, scope dot, we get all of the things off of scope, which is really, really nice. Um, and that's um, from the angular.d.ts file that declares all of these different things here. Well, so, um, so for that, and I'll, I'll show you kind of how you can define your own um, interfaces in just a second here. Um, so we've got scope is angular.iscope. For HTTP, it's angular. Dot, and for most of the things in Angular specifically, um, they're named I and then the name there, which is HTTP and then service. And so now we can do stuff with HTTP. And we've got all that stuff we can do, which is great. Now, yeah, so we've got my service, which is a service that we wrote. So how do we expose the type for that? Um, so actually, let's go take a look at my service.ts. I actually wrote this one completely in TypeScript. And I defined my own, ser uh, my in own interface. I say that my service has an hello count, which is a number, and say hello, which is a string. And so I can go back into my, where I'm using this, uh, da -da -da -da, everywhere, and I can say demo dot I my service, and now I can say my service dot, and we've got exactly what we want there. The say hello, it says it doesn't take any parameters, so if we start trying to give it parameters, it's like, wait a minute, this isn't quite right. So this can be really helpful for catching bugs and things like that, or just speeding you up when you're writing new code. I'm sorry, so I missed why, why is it demo? Oh, because, uh, yeah, let's go look at that again. So I wrapped it in a namespace here, which is basically just when it uh, transpiles it to JavaScript, it just kind of wraps it in an iffy. And so you can have things, uh, you can use the namespaces even outside of using TypeScript. So this is uh, an Angular service. So usually when you, you, you can do like a factory and still, like if I, oh, I see it's a problem. yeah, so we've got dot .service, my service here, right? Yeah. Um, you could do the same thing with the factory function and you could still use this interface here, but I prefer when I'm doing that to do classes with the ECMAScript 6 stuff. And the great thing about TypeScript is you can use all these ECMAScript 6 plus features and then when you run it through the compiler, you get ECMAScript 5 or 3, whatever you require, or even 6. And you can run that on browsers today. So you don't have to worry about, OK, well, ES6 is cool, but it's going to be a while before the browsers support it and stuff like that. Um, and then on top of that, what you get with TypeScript as opposed to something like Tracer or Babel or whatever is the tooling support. Being able to have those types there help with the tooling. So you get both, best of both worlds there. Um, so we've, we've talked a little bit about how that works. Um, this is like a get property here, which is cool. That's an ECMAScript 6 thing. You can use fat arrow functions and string interpolation here um, we're using. And this is all supported in TypeScript. Um, the, did anyone go to the um, React data vis visualization uh, session over there? So they were showing some uh, ECMAScript 6 with JSX that had the DOM stuff right in the middle of the code. Um, TypeScript now actually supports that as well um, via uh, TypeScript version 1.6. They've uh, added support for a TSX file, which allows you to do TypeScript plus the JSX stuff. So that's pretty cool. The, the goal of the TypeScript team is to make it possible to use TypeScript anywhere you would use JavaScript. And so they've been working with a lot of the people who are in charge of these really popular frameworks and saying, hey, what are your needs? How can we meet those with TypeScript? So it's been really great. Um, so we've got 12 minutes left. I, I bet that there's a lot of people with questions, so I'm going to leave some time for questions, and then maybe we can see some other stuff if people don't have any questions. What did you have? Do you see the, the, the benefits of helping your IDE and helping your code? 
Ah, yeah, that's really great. So when you um, compile your your code from uh, TypeScript to JavaScript, you can enable source maps, and so that when you're debugging, if you hit a breakpoint like in Chrome, it'll just go automatically to the TypeScript source. So you'll see the code you actually wrote with the breakpoint and all of the variables and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's actually quite nifty. And also, um, you can, if you're using Node.js, you can also do node debugging with source maps to do that as well. Yeah? Are there any, you mentioned uh, a couple other editors. Are there any, do you like this one best? Is that why you're? It's the one I use for work. Um, and I've really settled into it. I actually, I used IntelliJ for a while. And uh, I don't know what it is about our particular project that I was working on, but it, it was getting kind of big and it was kind of slow because it seemed like the IDE was trying to do all this analysis all the time. And uh, when I went to Visual Studio Code, everything was fast because there's really nothing going on except for what you're doing right then. You know, it'll give you the IntelliSense and stuff like that, but you don't have all of this other baggage that you get with a lot of other IDEs. Um, yeah. Visual Studio Code. If you go to code.visualstudio.com, you can download it there for free. Yeah. Art, you talked about being able to use some ES6 like class declaration and that mm -hmm. stuff. What about the typing? Is that coming or is it already in future ECMAScript? So there, there has been proposals about adding typing to JavaScript. There's been a lot of pushback against that from the JavaScript community. So we'll see. Maybe it'll happen someday, maybe it won't. But TypeScript wants to be the superset of the next version of JavaScript, or of the current version of JavaScript with new features in there. So right now, they, they support a lot of ECMAScript 6. They're still getting some of those kind of fringe features in there. But they support like the bulk of what you would expect. Um, and they're going to be continually bringing things in. And as people start adopting that, I, I mean, with Google, saying that they're going to be using TypeScript for Angular 2. That was a big thing where you know Microsoft and Google are now cooperating on this. And it's much more likely to see some of these new features in TypeScript might end up in JavaScript someday. So yeah? Uh, just a little plug for this. We recently converted over our Angular app to TypeScript. Cool. It was really easy, really painless, until we turned on the TS linter. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but once we worked through like the 12,000 errors we had, yeah. <laughs> it was really amazing like how we discovered like how poor our code was. Yeah. And even though the unit tests were passing and everything looked really good, when we really got down to it, we needed a lot of improvement and the TS lint was really cool. But we yeah. had really like 12,000 errors. Yeah, when I first turned on TS lint in my project, it was ridiculous. And I had to like start turning off certain rules just so I could get to the point where I could you know, deal with what was going on. And then we've been turning them on one by one and attack, attacking those errors and stuff like that. that I, that's what, it just made me think about it because you said, oh, you don't need to do typing all at once. Right. And I said, oh, well, unless you turn off TS Lint, right? Right. <laughs> like everything has to be typed. But it's, it's really great though. We've loved it. Right. Well, and we still have a lot of <laughs> Angular code that is, it's, it's in a .ts file, but there's not a lot of typing going on because everything's inside of a controller function where everything is type any. So it's like, OK, we get about the same amount of help, except for on things that we add type annotations to. But we just gradually, little by little, we've been, you know, when we've been working in one area of the code, we go and give it a little bit of love and bring types into it and test the heck out of it, and it's great. <laughs> So there are uh, type definition files for Node.js. And so you can write Node stuff in TypeScript. In fact, I've done that before. I don't know if Node itself wants to move to TypeScript. They're still working on ES6. So it might happen in the future. But for now, if you want to use TypeScript with Node, you can. Yeah, it all comes down to the traffic pipeline. Yep. I, I mean, you can write, I mean, you can write anything in ES6, any kind of JavaScript. Yep, exactly. 
Yeah, and I, you know, I've heard some people that say, you know, oh, now we have to run our code through a transpiler. But, you know, a lot of people nowadays are using build pipelines where they're minimizing the, or minifying their code, you know, annotating it, doing other checks on it. Throwing the TypeScript compiler in there really doesn't slow things down. In fact, I've got my my uh, gulp build process on my uh, project such that I save the code, and by the time I flip over to the browser, it's already refreshed. You know, it's that fast. So it really doesn't add a whole lot of baggage to your build process, but it does add a whole lot of benefit at your uh, develop time as well as when you're doing code analysis and testing and stuff like that. Has anyone ever tried refactoring really large JavaScript applications? It's kind of scary because you're like, okay, well, I'm making this little change. And I'm just praying that it's not going to break anything because there's this same variable name all over the place and it's meaning different things. And <laughs> oh man, so TypeScript, being able to put types behind things and being able to say, you know, Oh, and I didn't really show this, but this is pretty cool. I can go in here and say, okay, well, I don't actually want to call it hello count anymore. I want to call it um, hello count one. And now it's gone and it's renamed to every place, including I think where it's being used. Oh, I wasn't using it here. But if I go here now and say my service dot hello count one, it's smart enough to know where you're using things. You can do find all references, which is usually uh, a lot better than doing like just find in files, especially when you have a lot of similarly named variables. Good questions. Any, any other questions? Yeah. So like you said, we have a bunch of Angular files that are now TypeScript, but they don't really have TypeScript in them, per se. Mm -hmm. Where's a good resource to learn like true TypeScript? <laughs> okay, um, so there's there's a few different places you can go. So TypescriptLang.org uh, is the official website of TypeScript. Oh wow, that's really ugly rendering there. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's much nicer. But you can go to the Learn, and they have a tutorial. They have handbook. They have this TypeScript playground here where you can make, uh, you can do stuff here and then it'll show you what it transpiles to on the JavaScript side, basically just removing all the types there. And so that's pretty cool. Um, so have you, have you been through any of that stuff or? No, I mean, we're just, we're just kind of dabbling with it. Yeah, I so mean, I, I would say definitely look at the handbook. I mean, break right now is we're doing let instead of bar, so you can tell right. me really yeah, and I, I've started using let and const in my code as well, and I like it. <laughs> but, uh, oh, what, okay. So we're getting close to the end here. I wanted to show you before we leave, I want to show you how easy it is to get started with TypeScript. So it's just a node package. You can say npm install dash g TypeScript, and that will give you TypeScript. And it probably won't work right now because I have configured for my corporate proxy. But then um, if you just type TSC, you, it will try to compile everything uh, if you have a TypeScript configuration file. Or you can say TSC star dot star. And that will just run your, all your TypeScript files through the TypeScript compiler and spit out the JavaScript. So now we actually have here an angular.js, which is not to be confused with angular.js. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you'll see that there really isn't a whole lot of difference between the TypeScript version and the JavaScript version there. They've just removed the types, and you can go on your merry way. So really easy to get started with. If you want to pull in third-party type declaration files, um, you can get them directly from GitHub, but there's also a tool called TSD. Um, so if you go to de definitely type.org, they have stuff on that. M npm install dash g TSD. And then you can just say TSD install Angular JS, and that will um, install Angular JS's type definition file into your project. So you can reference it and 
it's pretty easy. Yeah? Do you know if that or anything like it also goes through TypeScript? It looks like TSD is kind of like So TSD is a node module, so you can use it through Node. Um, but you can also get TypeScript dec declaration files for things from Bower as well. So we use it for Angular. We use it for uh, a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, so the, the definitely typed repository. So basically all that TST does is go out to definitely typed and grab, let's see here. Let's uh, go back. So if we go here, so it just goes out to this repository, finds the file, downloads it, and puts it into your, into your project. So it's pretty nice. So in your example, though, you have your transpile code with your TypeScript code. Can you explain kind of your architecture or your directory? So here, by, by default, when you compile it, it will drop it in the same folder. Um, for my build processes that I use at work, uh, we use Gulp and we'll take the, who here uses Gulp and is familiar with it? So a handful of you guys. Basically, we take a glob of the source files using TypeScript, we run them through the TypeScript compiler, and then pipe them out to our output directory. We usually don't check in our JavaScript files because they're kind of like our build output, because we don't want to end up having like conflicts and stuff like that on people transpiling stuff. And so uh, we usually have that in an excluded folder, and then that is what ends up getting minified, annotated, bundled up, and thrown into our, our built application. So it works pretty well. Any other questions? I think we're just about time there. All right, thank you very much. And if you have any other questions, feel free to grab me outside. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>